uh, has an opportunity to go in those things. All right, and so uh, tonight we're just going to get right on into our lesson uh, on uh, chapter number 36. Chapter 36 is, uh, is kind of like what you call a, parent, a parenthetical chapter. Uh, God, God didn't just put e Esau in here uh, and just leave him because Esau was a very important character as well in, in the history of the world. And uh, he was, he was uh, also a grandson of Abraham. And, uh, and uh, the first verse says, Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. And so Edom is, is not only just a country, it's a person. Uh, it's because, see, Esau got his name changed as well. Jacob got his name changed to Israel. But Esau had his name changed to Edom. And, uh, and when he did, when God did that, he was, he was giving a, the, the blessing that Isaac had given to Esau, and, and he was making much of that for him. And, you, and we're going to look back at chapter number 27 for just a few minutes, and I want you to see this before we get into the, into the genealogy uh, that's given uh, for Esau. Uh, and uh, in uh, verse number 38 of chapter 27, we have a, uh, and it's, it's the time when Jacob, uh, East, uh, excuse me, Isaac was blessing his sons. You know, I believe that, that Jacob would have gotten a blessing too, but he wouldn't have gotten the right blessing because God wanted him to be first. The, the, the elders serving the younger. You know, and the, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And that's, that's a principle in the, in the, in the Bible that God, uh, God sometimes makes the last first so that the, the first uh, will, uh, you know, will have, he won't have all of the responsibility, the responsibility be on the last and, and we, we can see that all through the Bible where the, the, la, the elder uh, served the younger. But as, as we look here in, chapter, in verse number 38, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? You know, do, do you just have one blessing? And, uh, you know, Abraham didn't have this problem. He only had one son to bless. And that, that was Isaac. And you say, well, what about Ishmael? Oh, he blessed Ishmael as well. But this is, this is the, the thing. He didn't have to, to make a decision, or he didn't have to come up with, a, you know, well, I really shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to anyway. And so in verse 38, he's, he tells, do you have just one blessing? He says, bless me even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. That doesn't sound like the, the he-man uh, that, that we were told that Esau was. It sounds like a, a, a little bit of a whine. Have you ever heard of whine? Uh, well, here's one. <laughs> he, was, he was whining because he didn't get a blessing too. All right, and so, uh, so his Isaac answered, his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and uh, of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. I don't think he ever really got to the point where he did that. But he, but he, uh, he says that, uh, uh, that it, uh, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. And remember, it's not till ten or ten chapters later that, <laughs> that Isaac dies. Not till ten chapters later. And, and, and here he's, he said uh, the days, uh, in other words, he's telling Jacob, your days are numbered. When daddy's gone, you're going to be gone too. 
And Esau said uh, in his heart that, that this, this is going to happen. Then he says, then will I slay my brother Jacob. All right, and so here's Esau. Esau is, is the one who couldn't understand what God was doing. He didn't understand that God was doing something bigger than he was. Esau was never to be the one who was the promised seed. And uh, he wasn't the one that Christ would come through. And it's a good thing because he, uh, his, his peoples went away into pagan religion. All right, and so in, verse, uh, in chapter 36, we, we see that uh, all of this is taking place. And this, then he says, this is the generations of Esau who is Edom. And it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that God has preserved his heritage in the word of God. Right here in the middle of the book of, G of Genesis where he's, he's really not talking about Esau. He's, it's not about Esau, but it's God brings this into the, the, to our vision, into, into our forefront, so that we'll see that, that Esau was really just sort of like each and every one of us was. He was, he would have, you would have been hurt too if your daddy had just blessed your younger brother or younger sister. You know, he, you would have, uh, he, he would have think, you would think, oh my goodness. Uh, and and you, may, you may be thinking right now, well, I sure am glad I'm the youngest. <laughs> I was too. I, my, I have a sister, but she's older than me. And you know, so I'm the youngest, amen? And uh, I guess I got to be the baby in the family. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I got bigger than my sister when I was about 12 or 13, so I, I was always bigger there. Uh, but uh, So Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. Isaac and Rebekah did not like that one bit. They didn't ask. They, they didn't ask, Daddy, if it, could, I, could I have... You know, could I, could I marry this one? Oh, but, you know, Isaac and, and Rebecca, they, they said, what are we going to do with those boys? What are we going to do with those boys? Those boys are just spoiled rotten. And so Esau's wives are mentioned uh, in, uh, in uh, verse number two. Esau took the wives of the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Aholibama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion the Hivite, and Basimath, uh, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajoth. And, uh, and so we see he took his wives of the peoples that they were not supposed to be intermingling with, but they, but they did anyway. Jacob didn't. Jacob went another way. Jacob was out in Haran for 20 years. I, what was Esau doing all this time? Waiting for his daddy to die. <laughs> he was waiting for daddy to get out of the way so that he could revenge him, get, get the revenge that he really wanted on, uh, on his brother. And so he, he has these, these wives and uh, the three wives of, of Esau were all from the Canaanite uh, lands. Hittites, Hovites, they, they were, uh, and, and also Ishmaelites. And uh, I that just about gets everybody right in there, the Gentiles, and it gets the Shemites as well. And uh, the Semites were anyone that's, that was related to, uh, to Shem, uh, back from uh, Ab from Noah, and uh, the, the Shemites were a uh, were a part of the Semitic race, and uh, so a lot of these people that lived there, uh, the Edomites would would you could be concerned considered uh, Shemites, and uh, and uh, they they weren't the uh, Hamites like had gone further down into Egypt and and the. Uh, the others that had gone further over into the, uh, the, the, the Arabian area. All right, and so you, you see, there, there, was a whole lot of, there was a whole lot to be considered. 
when God made Jacob the one and, and Esau had to just sort of take it. And he just, he just, he didn't get a word in it. God didn't come to, to Esau at all. And, uh, and Esau never sought out God, as far as I know. And what a, what a, what a s- s- terrible thing that is. And verse 4 says in chapter 36, And Ada bare to Esau Eliphaz, and Basimath bare Ruel, and Holibama bare Jeush, and Jalem, and Korah. These are the sons of, of Esau, which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. And so we have these, these uh, five different people, individuals that were born in the land of Canaan to Esau. And that was before he left and went into Seir, which was Edom. Eliphaz, whose name means to whom God is strength, uh, he, was, uh, he was born to uh, the, the daughter uh, or the, the wife of of Esau, whose name was Adah. All right, and so uh, she, she, you know, she must have been, uh, you know, it must have been something that that attracted him, uh, Esau, to her. And so she was the first one, the first wife. It's awful to say that, you know, because God only wanted one wife for one man. You say, well, what do you mean? Uh, why did he allow this, these, all these things, all these multiple marriages and things? Well, it wasn't his idea. It wasn't his idea at all. I mean, he told us what, it, what he wanted back in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. One man for one woman for life. That's it. And uh, so Eliphaz was born, and he was, his name was... Uh, and, and it was a it was a real uh, this was a real kind of a I don't think that the grandparents were real happy about it. Now on the other side, may, maybe you know, in, uh, when Ada's side, you know, the family they they might have been really happy about the the birth, but I don't think Isaac and Rebecca were very happy at all because they said you you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to marry outside of the family. And so they they. Uh, they had they had a sort of a a love hate relationship all all the time, and uh, so to whom God was strength, boy, you know they they named him a good name, uh, and uh, the name that they named him was was you know to be admired. To whom God is strength, and uh, you know everybody wants to be strong in the Lord. But to Basimath was born Ruel. And his name means friend of God. Hey, you know, they're, they're naming them, you know, pretty good names right here, you know. And it, it sounds pretty good and everything is looking, looking like a, a, real, a real good uh, thing. But then to this, this one, this younger, this one that's named Aholibama. Now, you know, who did we say she, she was the daughter of? And uh, Aholibama was the daughter of Anna, uh, Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. And for some reason, she cha- she didn't like the names that I guess her her, her uh, the other wives were naming their children. So she named theirs uh, Hasty, Occult, and Ice. Oh my goodness, Ice! That's that's what the name Korah means there. Ice, boy, he, he must have had a really good personality. Uh, you know, he's a, he's frozen. And then there's J- J- Jalem. Uh, his name means a cult. Goodness gracious, uh, you know that that doesn't uh, that doesn't fit too well uh, in the Baptist church, does it? <laughs> Not at all. And uh, and Jayush was hasty, and uh, I think that probably was uh, kind of. Named after his daddy a little bit right there because uh, he he did everything in, in haste, you know he ran out he, he you know Jacob said uh, go go uh, go and get uh, everything and uh, make me some venison and it's like I like it and uh, and bring it to me and then I'm going to bless you 
and, they, and uh, that gave Rebecca time to be conniving. And, uh, and, uh, and she was conniving with the conniver, <laughs> Jacob. So they all, they got together and they, uh, they, they outdid uh, Esau in all of that. All right, and so those were the ones that were born in Canaan. Those were the ones that, uh, that came of them in Canaan. And uh, they, they were still under the influence of their father, Isaac, when they were in Canaan. They still had the, the you know, sometimes, sometimes the children, uh, you know, the, the, while they're living at home, they, they, uh, they, they uh, go to church, uh, you know, they act like they love the Lord. And sometimes, sometimes it's an act. But they're doing it. Why are they doing it? To please you. Not to please God, but to please mom and dad who said, you're going to go to church as long as you live under this roof. And so they, they do. They go to church. And they, uh, they, you know, a lot of times they, they, they uh, you know, they, they put on a good act. But they, uh, they, they didn't really get everything that they were taught as a young person. And sometimes it, uh, it works out well, sometimes it doesn't. You know, sometimes they just go away. I, I know of a, 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 an evangelist that was, I mean, he was every, going everywhere doing all these things. And, uh, and uh, we, we, were, we took him out to, to, to dinner after he'd preached at our church. And, and uh, you know, and, and he, he just looked over at me when we were through eating and he said, he said, Brother John, he said, uh, whatever you do, take time for your family. Take time for your family. Why is that? Uh, you know, why did he say that? It's because he had two sons that both went away from God. And they, they never, as far as I know, they never came back. They may, they may be in church now. I sure hope they are. But he, he went on to glory, and, uh, and uh, I don't know that they, they had ever come back to the Lord at all, you know. So I, I determined that that particular time I was, I was going to take time out with my children. And uh, boy, when, I, when I'd get home from work, I didn't feel like it, but I got out and played ball with them and did everything I could to be out there with them. Because there's a lot of times, uh, you know, they did their homework on the way to the hospital to visit somebody in the hospital or, or, or go to a funeral home. I can't tell you how many times they, uh, they, they're out in the car doing their, their lessons while we're in trying to comfort a family. You know, it's, it's, it's a sad day, you know, when, or, when the family uh, turns away. And I think this, this is one reason that uh, we see this, uh, this here. And then there's one more reason, it's, and it's because there was a prophecy concerning Esau and Edom. Uh, and uh, a prophet that prophesied uh, just about that. And so Esau left Canaan. He left home, and, uh, and he left all the influences of the worship of the one true and living God who had, had you know, his, his place was Bethel. His, his home was there. It was, that was his house. The house of God was Bethel. All right, and so uh, Edom uh, or, or Esau uh, had sons that were born in, uh, in the land as well as in Canaan. And so the land that they went to was, the, was a land that was called Seir, S-E-I-R. And in, in that land, uh, that, was, that was where God was going to raise up a nation. And not only one nation, but many nations out of, out of Esau. And this was a part of the blessing that was given to him, that, that many nations would come out of him. And, uh, and it was, it was a, a wonderful thing that God was doing, but uh, most of those nations were a thorn in the side of Israel all the days of, of their existence. And they are still a thorn in their side today. Still uh, in, in this day that we're living. 
And the, so the, uh, the, we see a, an, an, interesting, uh, an interesting title that's given to each and every one of these sons that were born in this land. And, it's, and, uh, and we see the word duke. Now, I guess if you were from England, you know, where, where our Bibles were translated from, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and you, you would understand what a duke was. You know, all I know about Duke is was uh, when I was growing up, there was people that lived across the streets, and their name was Morrison, and uh, and I only remember his name because his first name was Icky, and I don't know that 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 uh, he was a nice man. I mean, but they had a white uh, boxer that would that lived in the street. I mean, he laid down in the street, and he just he just that was his street, and uh, nobody bothered him. Uh, you know, and so, so uh, his name was Duke, amen. So, uh, then him and, and John Wayne, and the other, those are the only Dukes that I knew of. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, this word Duke though means the chief of thousands, chief of thousands. And so, th- these men, these boys that, that were growing up were going to become chiefs of thousands of people. What a what a you know what an awesome responsibility for for those guys. But uh, you know uh, there was there was uh, from from Eliphaz there were these these sons were born. Uh, one named Teman. His name means on the right hand. That sounds like a pretty good name. Amen. And, and then Duke Omar, and uh, he must have been one of those guys that you couldn't shut up because his name was talkative. <laughs> Talkative, so I guess I guess from the very first of his life he was a talkative kind of fella, and uh, and uh, uh, you know a lot of people like that. Amen. Then then there was another one. His name was Zepho. Zepho. Now now he was not one of the Marx brothers, uh, but he was. His name was Zepho, and his name means watchtower. And uh, and then there was uh, one by the name of, of Gatam, G A T A M, and. And his name means a burnt valley, a burnt valley. Boy, I tell you what, some, some of his names are going downhill. I mean, we, we started off with a friend of God, and uh, now we've, we've digressed to, to in the naming of these children. And then there was name, one named Kenaz, and his, his name means hunting. And uh, so that must have been, you know, he must have been sort of like his, his uh, grandfather Esau. Uh, and... Uh, and his name means hunting. And then there was one named Amalek. How many remembers the name Amalek in the Bible? All right, so the name Amalek, they was the, the, uh, the Amalekites were a, a people that were continually a thorn in the side of Israel. When Israel came out of the, the Egyptian bondage and they crossed over the Red Sea and they were headed towards Mount Horeb, uh, which was Mount Sinai, and, uh, and the meeting with God, and on the way, they were attacked by the Amalekites. Now, they, they were cousins. They were cousins to the, Is- to the, to the Israelites. And uh, so his name means born after the flesh. And uh, he was born of Timnah, Eliphaz's concubine. So he was born... In, a, in an unusual way, and uh, not, not the, the, the usual uh, from one of the daughters uh, that, that, were, that were there. But, um, so the Amalekites, he was not actually uh, one of uh, a, a whole brother to these boys. He was a half-brother. All right, and so this... Uh, uh, this was uh, this was from this was all the sons of Ada that were born to Esau in this country of Edom, and then then there was Basemath. Uh, the sons of Basemath were uh, uh, her son was Ruel, and he had four sons. Uh, one was named Nahath, which means descent, and uh, another Zerah, his name means dawn, and uh, I guess he was. Born early in the morning, I guess. And then Shammah means desert. Uh, and uh, then 
there's one named Mizah. His name means terror or fear. You know, and 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 you can see the 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 names are making a kind of a progression away from God and and into the the areas of where they they should be a feared nation. And so that was Basemath's uh son Ruel's children. And then the sons of Aholibama, uh Esau's wife, uh these three, Duke Jeush and Jalem and Korah. And and these these are the uh, you know, the ones that means hasty and occult and ice. And, uh, and we saw them. And then uh, the sons of, uh, of, of, of Aholibama there uh, are, are indicative of, of what God was wanting to do. To, because one, one's, you know, he, he's, his name is hasty, but it, it also could, could be translated to whom God hastens. And then, and then Jalem, whom God hides, why? Because of the occult. And I think he, he got mixed up in the occult in his life. There's nothing in the Bible to say that, but I've just got a feeling that because of his name, there must have been something about the occult in his life. And then Korah, whose name means ice, also, and, and I can identify with this name, bald. Amen. And uh, sons of, the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land. And then there was, there was, there was others. Uh, the sons of Seir, the Horite, who was whom the, the first one that the, the land was named after, because Edom lived in his land. Uh, Esau lived in his land, but it became Esau's land, Edom. And uh, so Seir uh, was only a name that was used by him. And then uh, he, had, uh, he had several sons whose names, one, number one, his uh, son, his name was Lotan. And uh, his children were Horai, which means cave dweller, and He-Man, uh, not He-Man, but Haman. His, his name was Faithful. And then, and then he gave, uh, they, they had uh, Lotan, Lotan's sister, was Timna, was one of the, uh, one of the others that, that of whom the, the one Amalek was born. And then, and then from uh, the second son, Shobal, his name, uh, his name of his children were Alvin, which means tall. So I guess it was a tall baby. I don't know. Because it was named when he was little. And then Manahath, which means rest. And Ebal, which means stony. And Shepho, not, not, the same as Zepho that we saw before, but this name means baldness. And uh, Onam, which means wealthy. And so that you can see that they were, they were looking for more than just, uh, just the, the occasional things. They, they wanted wealth and they wanted all these other things. And then, then there was one named Zibion, and his, uh, his children were Aja, which means hawk, and uh, Anna, which means answer, and uh, and it was him that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zibion, his father. And obviously, this was something that was well known at that particular time uh, that uh, that he had found uh, these mules in the wilderness uh, while he was feeding his his father's livestock. And uh, and and uh, we don't we don't really know the rest of the story. Uh, but I know one thing, uh, that'll give us something to ask the Lord when we get there into heaven. And uh, he told us we would, we would know all things then. And so we'll be able to, to figure it out there. And, and then uh, Duke Anna uh, and uh, his, his uh, two, two sons, uh, or one son was Dishon. And, and his name means antelope, antelope. And then Aholibama was his daughter. And then, and then uh, Duke Nishon, Dishon was, uh, his children were Hemden, uh, which means pleasant. That's a nice name, that, you know, pleasant. You know, I, I think that's a, that would be a good name. Eshban, fire of discernment. You know, I'm not sure about that name. That's, that looks like he's, 
uh, he, he was a, a discerning sort of, sort of fella. Ithran, which means excellence, and Karan, which means liar, not liar, liar, it's liar, uh, the, the musical instrument. So I, I guess he was a, kind of like a, a roving minstrel, I don't know. <laughs> he, he must have liked to play the guitar, you know, whatever it was. It, it was sort of like a guitar, but I don't know. Uh, and then there was uh, a son named Ezar, uh, and uh, he had three sons by the name of Bilhan, which means modest, Zavan, which means disturbed, and Achan, sharp-sighted. I mean, he must have been able to see a long way. I guess he didn't need glasses. I, that's what I figure. Uh, and, uh, and then there was a, uh, a Duke Dishan, and his children were Uz and Aran. One means fertile and the other means a wild goat. And, uh, and there you have. Uh, that, that's, the, uh, that's the sons of Esau. And those are the, the offspring and the, and, the, uh, and the others that were born in the land uh, of Seir or the land of Edom. And there were some kings that reigned over, and then they're, they're enumerated here for us in, the, in this, this, this book in verses 31 to 39. And uh, the first one is Bela, the son of Baor. And he, he was, the name of his city was Denhaba. And uh, his name means destruction. If you're a king, you know, that's a good name for a king, destruction, you know. That you're, you're not going to have a lot of opposition if your name is destruction. And, uh, and then he, uh, he died, and, uh, and then a man named Jobab came up and he said he was the son of Zerah, and, he was a, uh, and his name means a desert. And so, uh, you know, I guess uh, I have no idea why they named him that, but he must have been a, a, a desolate guy, and it's kind of like he, he wanted, uh, he was sort of to himself. Husham means haste, and is, uh, he's, he was of the land of Temani, and uh, so he was a king of, of the Edomites. And then there was a man named Hadad. His name means mighty. And uh, so I guess he was Hadad the Mighty. And uh, he was the son of Bedad. And uh, he smote the Midian, Midianites in the field of, of Moab. And the name of his city was Avith. They, 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 would, uh, they would have their own city that they were over, that they wanted, you know, that they wanted to be over, and they would do that. And uh, that was the, uh, the way that, uh, that they ruled in those days. And then there was a man named Samla, which means garment, uh, and he was from Masreka. And uh, he was, he was uh, I, most of these cities that we see here are, are obscure names that, that we don't know where they were, where the cities were. We just know they were in that general vicinity. And uh, there, there's, there's probably some archaeologists going around looking for those cities as we speak and trying to find out where those places were so that they can identify them as being parts of the, of the, the scripture. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the amazing thing is that uh, most of the archaeologists go out there to try to disprove the Bible. But you know what they find out? That they, they're actually proving the Bible. And they're actually proving that the things that are written down in the Bible are true. All right, and then, and then uh, there's, a, there's one named Saul. There had to be a Saul somewhere, didn't they? You know, Israel had, to, had Saul as, his, as their king, so they had a Saul. And uh, his name means ask for. And Saul was of Rehoboth. Now, Rehoboth is right over here on 29 Highway. But that's not the Rehoboth that they were talking about. There, there was a Rehoboth that was the name of a city in that area. And it was Rehoboth by the river. Uh, we don't really know what river they were talking about because they didn't tell us. Uh, but most people think that it was the Euphrates River, but I don't think it would be that far up. Uh, that there's probably another minor river that, they were, uh, that Rehoboth was by. And then there was one by the name of Baal Hanan. 
He was the Lord of benignity. Have you ever heard of something that was benign? You know, it, it means that it, it wasn't active. It wasn't uh, cancerous. And so he was the Lord of benignity. Amen? And so uh, his, his, uh, he was the son of Akbor. And, uh, and then the eighth and the, and the last one that's mentioned is Hadar. And his name means enclosure. And I guess that he, he might have finally enclosed the land and, and, uh, and had that. He said the name of his city was Pau, P-A-U, and his wife was Mehedabel. And uh, he was, she was the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahub. I have no idea why her name was mentioned, but it must have been important to God to put it in there uh, so, that, uh, so that there would be a record of this woman, because not all the not not a lot of women's names were mentioned in in the scriptures, uh, as far as in these genealogies and in these 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 records that were that were made, and uh, that's another one of those we can ask the Lord when we get to heaven. Amen. Uh, Lord, what did what did you who was uh, Mehetabel? And uh, if she was saved, uh, he'd probably go over and, and introduce us. But if she wasn't saved, he said, "Uh oh, she was." You know, she, she didn't believe, and uh, she, she wound up somewhere else. And then there were uh, some that after Esau that came up, they were chiefs of thousands. And uh, the first was uh, Timnah, and his, his, uh, he, his name means a portion. And then there was one named Alva, which means moral perverseness. You see, it was, it was already there. There was moral depravity. That was going up, moral perverseness. And uh, I, I've got a feeling he was not uh, the kind of guy we would want to know. Duke Jetheth, uh, and his name means a nail, a nail. You know, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the, I think it's in the, in the book of Isaiah, uh, talks about a nail in a sure place. You know, and that's what God wants us to be, a nail in a sure place. If we're a nail in a sure place, that means that we've been driven into the right kind of wood. We've been driven into the right place, and we'll be there for a long time. And God wants us to be there. So then there was uh, Duke Ella, and, and his, he was, uh, his name means terebinth. And that was some sort of a tree, I believe, terebinth. And then uh, Duke Pinon, is a, is, his name means darkness, darkness. And then Kenaz. And his name means hunting, as opposed to the other one that was that was hunter. He's he's hunting, and uh, and then Duke Timon, and that's talking about on the right hand, Mibzar, a fortress, Magdiel, praise of God, and Iram, just means belonging to a city. You know we belong to a city too. We belong to a city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And, and we're going to that city one day. We're going to be there. We're going to be, be in a, in there where he is. And uh, that, that, <clears throat> that's, the, that's the important thing is to be where God is. <clears throat> and then uh, if, you'll, if you'll turn over just, just for just a minute over into the book of Obadiah. Obadiah. All right. That's in the Minor Prophets, Hosea and Joel and uh, Amos and, uh, and then Obadiah. And as, as, we, as we close up this, I want to I try to give us an understanding of why that whole chapter is in the Bible. Because there's, there's got to be a reason that God puts things. He doesn't just put something in there. For no reason at all. And he gives us all these names, and he gives us all these understanding of what their names mean and everything. And, and uh, you know, we know something about them by their names, but, uh, but what, we, what we don't know is why did God put that right there at that particular place in the, in the, in the canon of Scripture? And uh, <clears throat> Obadiah gives us some understanding of that. And... Uh, and in verse 6 of chapter 
uh, of the of the first chapter, which, if you if you'll uh, remember, there is only one chapter in Obadiah. And no, there's three, four, four chapters, but they're small chapters. In verse six in chapter one, it says, "How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border." The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in them. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And, and thy mighty men, O t men shall be dismayed to the end that everyone on the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. See, Edom is mentioned in the scriptures in the day of the Lord. Edom is going to be, uh, is one of those nations that is going to come against Israel. And it, and it says in, in uh, verse number 15, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, and uh, I've got to turn my page here. They shall, <clears throat> they shall drink, and there is just one. one. I, I had over into Jonah. Uh, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. And then he says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. You see, God is going to deliver Jacob, who is Israel. God is going to deliver him in that day. And if you, if you, if you recall, the, the name of the tribulation is this. The, the times... Of Jacob's troubles. It's not, it's not the time of Israel's troubles. It's the time of Jacob's troubles. Jacob's troubles did not end when, uh, when uh, you know, when he died. His, his troubles goes on and on and on. Israel has never been a nation that followed the Lord for very long at a time. Now, when they, when they went back into the land and Joshua led them into the land, you know, uh, for about 150 years, they followed the Lord. But there was another generation that came up. And <clears throat> I think we're living in those kinds of generations right now. They don't, they don't recognize the Lord. They don't understand him. They don't know who he is. They, they have no clue as to his identity. And, and, uh, and in verse 18, he says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. These all were the house of Esau. This is the house of Esau, and these are the ones that God said, they're, they're like stubble, and Israel is like a flame. And, uh, and the sons of Joseph and the sons of, uh, of, uh, uh, of Jacob are going to burn them with the fire. It's going to be, it's going to be an awful thing. And uh, the last verse says this, And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion, to judge the mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. See, Esau's not going to be in the kingdom. Esau's going to be destroyed. I'm sorry that Esau was such a man, and he, and he turned away from God, and he went away from God. He went away from the worship of God. He went away from everything that his parents had taught him. And he, he turned to his own ways. That's why the book, I believe the book of, Esau, of this chapter on Esau is given to us in the scriptures 
so that we'll understand who these people were, were that God was going to destroy off the face of the earth. And, and they, uh, their names are given to us. What a, what a sad day it is that, uh, that we have this. But the wonderful thing is that uh, in, uh, in chapter number 37, we are going to get right back into Jacob's life. Now, Jacob, Jacob wasn't, uh, you know, what do we call the Sunday school boy type, you know. He's, not, he, 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 he's, he's gotten into trouble. He's gotten into things that shouldn't have been. But uh, there's one thing about him that at least at the first, he stayed in the land. And that's the land that God had given him. Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And that's what we'll look at on next, next week. And so you see, God doesn't just put things in the Bible to fill up space. He has something for us to learn and for us to know uh, out of all of these things so that we can understand more about who he is and what he's doing in the world, even today, in the day that we're living in. We're seeing the things of God played out before our very eyes. And there's so many people who don't, who don't know what they're looking at. But the ones that do, we're, we're saying, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you today, and we thank you for your goodness to us. And I pray that you would just bless and help us now as we go into our time of, of prayer and and, uh, and, uh, and just ask that you would just touch and bless. Thank you for your love for us in Jesus' name. Amen. For all those that are listening online, thank you for t- tuning in, and thank you for com- uh, t- tuning in, and God bless you.